Okay, <clears throat> now uh, getting back to uh, RPC. There, there, there does seem to be a point to uh, to that diversion. Finally, I I thought that there would be, but I, I wasn't sure. But uh, now I think that uh, since I've, I've managed to get this working inside here, I can run it from here. Uh, you know, and compile and run. <laughs> All I did was I copied the files from. Uh, that uh, CPP debug directory here into here and um, I excluded this from the project for bo both projects so there won't be any creation of these files and I'll just keep them as they are um, and uh, one of the things I, I found out, for instance, was, well, part of the reason why it wasn't working was some of these numbers were wrong, or well, different anyway. Uh, okay, so it's a new, it's a new GUID. But uh, in the working one, that's version 4 here, this value for that, these, this table um, contains flags and information about the remote procedure to be called. And uh, in one case, when I did it, you know, uh, at the command line, I ended up with a value 32 here, which uh, is this kind of, apparently corresponds to this kind of handle. And um, here I get 33, which is a different kind of handle. And uh, one works and one doesn't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. Uh, and that's true for both procedures. So this auto handle, I don't know how it works, but uh, obviously I don't want that on. Um, but I can show you it working. First thing, just without um, stepping through anything. It should compile and run. Okay, so it has a little spinner thing. Now the client it's compiled already. I can run it from here, but it takes a command line, so Let's see here it is here. Get this and put it here. Okay. So it's picking up the messages uh, using RPC. Um, this is a debug version too. Message. So that, as expected, code working over there works over here. Although uh, I can't say that. Uh, was 100% expected because uh, I might have been linking with the wrong lib or something. Uh, sending no message should shut it down, which it did. Okay, now how does the server work? Um, the server, what I have the, the reason why I, I can do that little spinner thing uh, is because you, you, if you recall the, 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 the function that um, receives those messages and calls the remote procedure, the remote procedure which prints messages, right, here's, this is the remote procedure, doesn't return at all um, until this shutdown gets called also remotely, right, there's nothing in the, uh, here's the server code, 
um, listen, right? It calls this listen, and when the listen returns, then uh, then it's done. Because you, know, you can't go inside. You can't do anything else. It's blocked here, basically. However, so what I did was I added a I just declared a thread object here, and uh, the thread runs the server main, okay, and then main. Uh, I wonder if I still need I need this part. I don't think so. I at first I was going I was no maybe I do. I don't think it th this here step where you keep posting a message to your current thread. This is the current I could put get current thread here until you stop getting false. Is this step, if you recall from a long time ago, that um, creates a message queue for a thread. Right? There's no window in this for this thread, uh, so if you want to have a message queue, you have to do this step. It's a hack, and that's also the uh, suggested way to create a message queue. The prescribed method. I wonder what would happen if I got rid of it. Because uh, here all I'm... Yeah. See, this wait any doesn't... Con Previously, I had wait any with met Windows messages included, but I don't have that now, so I don't need a message queue. I'm not looking for messages. I'm just looking for uh, whether or not the keyboard has a you know a key key waiting. <clears throat> I can hit escape to get out of the server. If I just run this, it's running the server. It should start spinning. I can escape from this by just pressing escape. See? So I don't, I don't need this anymore. Prior to that, I was looking for WM key down and all that stuff. Okay. So how this works is exactly what you're looking at. It's in a loop. Um, I have a one of my auto timer things, the, the highly efficient timer, uh, as well the spinner which draws that little spinning thing, and uh, this timer uh, signals itself every 150 milliseconds, and the spinner spins every once every 200 milliseconds. I didn't want to make them the same because and I think I would end up skipping some, if you know what I mean. If they were too close to being in sync, then um, this update might not see that the time has elapsed. And anyway, it's not important. All this is being used for is efficiency, so it doesn't use up too much processor. Processor usage should be minimal. Whereas if it's a what they call a tight loop, where there's no weight here, right? And I'm just updating. Then, uh, then it will use up as much processor as it can grab. The first parameter in for the signal class is another signal to wait on if that other thing gets signaled. Um, then it'll break out of there and tell you server. So it's appropriately at zero. Right? Not using any, any resource. Whereas if, if I didn't have that special timer, if I didn't use it, and I just kept looping around and around and around, 
Yeah, then it would use sum. Uh, so all this thing is doing is waiting for whoops. Either a message from the timer or a message from server, which is a thread, and the thread gets signal when it dies. So if the server is killed by the client, this thread will exit and that will cause this now to prove, to prove that that's the case I would have to get rid of the or make the give the timer a really long time huh? like uh, that's one and a half that's 15 seconds 150 long time so the question is will, will this thing get signal when the thread exits and it should I hope it might have been the timer, right? Well, no, actually, the only reason I quit the loop here. Oh no, key key pressed. Right? Yeah, yeah, but there was no key pressed when I sent. Anyway, you'll see in a second. You won't see any spinner. Okay, the spinner's too slow. Sorry about that. My mouse gets, gets double clicked. So that, that's working. Now doing this should close the server and kill the thread and the program should exit. And it did. See? So even though the timer didn't go off because it's set here to some number of years. Uh, this thing was signaled because the thread quit. And there's a return code. This is uh, no, no. why have I declared this this way? Is a question. Um, instead of just declaring a server, I don't think I need to. Do, there was a reason why I wanted this originally, but I don't think I need that. I think I can just declare it now. I don't need a smart pointer. Let me try it. Uh, would take any some of this stuff was from just left over from experiments. Uh, return doesn't take any arguments. Start the server. If it stops, then I return the return code, otherwise no. It's not safe for me to access this value if the thread is still running. This should work. At one point, um, I had this thing deleting itself. And that wasn't working right. So then I thought of. <clears throat> Using a smart pointer, I think this. I think it's fine. I can just declare it. It's the same thing, isn't it? A smart pointer. When it goes out of scope, it destroys itself, and so with this. So the server running. I wish I would remember not to. Oh, I know how to make it. If I change. I don't know. 
It should remember this spot. Works fine, no problem. One thing that I get is, is a strange. Occasionally, I get a, a tr an error traced out in the output for the server. Oh, actually, I can run it under the debugger. There's the client code is built. And I believe the reason um, that occasionally it gets a, an error, it's like a first chance exception error uh, gets printed out, it has to do with the way that the, the uh, server shuts down. Now it's running under the debugger, but there's nothing much for us to see. It's currently on this line, right? Don't wait. False. Now see, that's not correct. I looked up this function, and it's wait for calls to complete. Zero means disregard calls in progress and remove interface from the registry you see what it's doing it's something goes in the registry while the server is running and then it gets removed well if wait for calls to complete is set to false it's not going to wait right zero disregard disregard calls in progress like this, and that's what this is set to. This flag is not don't wait, it's wait. True means wait, false means don't wait. Okay, now if I just kill the client, I didn't get, or did I? No. Sometimes there's an, an error printed out here. Not this time. Seems like it's been cleaned up, really. In any case, you can see that that's working. Now, one of the things I did was uh, <coughs> I had this function that returns a string describing an, the error, an error code, right? And my idea was in common here. See, I made a, a directory called RPC. And I was thinking of an, possibly an RPC managing lib. But I figured instead of that, why don't I put that, mix that together with this thing? And I did add an RPC type. Yeah related file in here. It just has one function which is that thing for the error string. Right? We get error code. Get the string associated with it, an RPC status. Okay. Now I've also got that HTTP client, right? Which is also a kind of a remote procedure type thing. And seeing as uh, this RPC stuff works, I was thinking I could make an RPC uh, object like a pure virtual interface to RPC uh, of you know, some sort and um, perhaps you know one thing you could do with RPC is you could um, 
make up you can make up any function, but you could make up a function where the remote machine uh, copies a file, let's say. Just like uh, the HT is gone, but the HTTP client has. Right? Or if you wanted to write, maybe send a file to a remote server, that, that could be another thing that you could do with RPC. You can write anything you want in here. These functions are called, meant to be called by a remote user. One thing you could make, for instance, would be a little chat client, you know, uh, like um, Windows Messenger, let's say. And instead of printf here, you could print a, a little string in a, in a box and you could make it uh, bi-directional too if you wanted. Even though there's a server and a client and the situation is asymmetric, uh, you can make it symmetric by using a, a bi-directional name pipe, one that can be read from and written to, and you could make a little, you know, uh, a chat thing for your office on the LAN. And then maybe I could uh, try to aggre do that aggregation thing with RPC and HTTP, which have some similar functionality, uh, similar functions. They both have to do with clients and servers, right? And uh, that might be a good way to uh, see what's, what's involved in aggregating two, two objects like that. And the HTTP thing is... See, so I would make a device instead of... In addition, sorry, to this device, I would make a <coughs> RPC device. What's this interface have? This is similar. There's certainly connecting that goes on and disconnecting, right? Uh, this here is gets a page. I don't have that with RPC. We could add it. Alloc and well, there's no allocating. I could add that to. In fact, it's already implemented. Our buffer, right? Now look at like a remote buffer. Try to not use I should use just the basic keyword. The green words for uh, for this sort of thing. Well, then I'm gonna change these. <laughs> Whatever, good enough. That actually is already Im implemented. Um, so if you see, you see where we're going. Where I'm thinking of going with this is um, to uh, make a new uh, com, one of my com things. So in Dev Manager, to create one is just a matter of doing this, right? Um, I can't put, unfortunately, I can't put these strings into the template, so I have to be specific and make a, a declaration for every new device. Uh, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, it complained. I tried pa just passing these two in, and it said that I have. Not here.
Did not have number. Oh, that's true. Why did that compile on this one? Oh, I just added it. In fact, it's, it shouldn't be necessary because it's a member, and when this thing dies, its member should, their destructor should get called. But I wanted to uh, just put, <clears throat> put it here so that I could see it happening. See if it takes time or whatever. Because here too, uh, oh, maybe it was here where I was getting those funny errors. Must have been. Okay. And then uh, over in U test here, I could make uh, either this or an RPC thing. The RPC thing. It's kind of interesting because the the, the remote procedures that one might want to call should be arbitrary, right? But um, perhaps one could pass a procedure or some, somehow to uh, to an object. How would you do that? You pass the C code and have the thing compile it on the other side, and that's possible, right? You could have this. You could have a thing, an RPC client device, right? You open up, and if you're the client, you send to the server if it's there, you know, as a special identifier. Um, a text string which represents an entire file. You could use this this interface to send the to send the file, and then that could be C code, and the server then would uh, make a file locally and do like system cl file file dot cpp. Right, and then, and then its remote procedure would be to run that. Anyway, I'm getting well, well ahead of myself. That's where I am. Anyway, it's good that this works, although it still there's little to see. I changed these to CPP instead of C. I've been trying to figure out the structure. Uh, the syntax of the highlighting is useful. One of the things I noticed, I don't know if I read it, wrote it in here, so it would be in here. No, it's in this one. In rpc.h, I found these defines. You remember that they had that comment, notice that uh, one has capital M-I-D-L and one has small? Well, yeah, sure, that, that would be fine, provided somebody just redefines the small letter one to capitals. So instead what I did was I just changed these to capitals, and you'll notice it still works. There's no, the only reason why people use these small, small letter things uh, I, th I think is because of that MIDL thing. The MIDL thing spits out code. Alec and Cree. Do you see? Do you, anybody see it? Yes. Where is it? Uh, no, do I change this? Because this is a pro no, I haven't changed this. This is what's provided by the MIDL. 
So is this, using both using capitals. And uh, for some reason, this is the file that you write. He put it in small letter. Whereas by definition, they're not. If you change, if you write it with small mibl, rpc.h just changes that into capital. So why confuse things by having uh, small letters and large letters together? There was a comment here. I removed the comment because it's no longer necessary. I only left this here to show somebody who might watch this video and I can get rid of it. Excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, that's what I'm looking at. Uh, two of my own special kind of calm objects. Uh, one using RPC, one using HTTP. Both have clients and servers, and uh, they, they seem to make uh, together uh, a good pair of things to try and aggregate into one into one object that supports both. Right. Okay, see you.